Hello, everyone, and welcome to the November edition of the AAA. That's the Ask Anthony Anything session. And I know I have been known to say this quite frequently, but today we truly have something special prepared for you. So beyond excited uh, to be here with you today. And let's dive right in. It would have been a special episode in its own right if we had just Elitsa Taskova, our Chief Product Officer here at Nexo, present. Hello, Elitsa. Hey, but everyone. But we made it even more special because we have Maggie joining us. And Maggie, as you might know, uh, is somebody uh, at Nexo, the gentle voice behind the social block, which is uh, the podcast that we kicked off a few months back. I really cannot recommend her podcast um, enough. It's not just another podcast. It shares incredible insights. It has incredible guests. So we have Maggie on the program today. Hi, Maggie. Hi. Um, and, you know, she is employee number 27, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, she is the epitome of merit-based rising through the ranks in Nexo, which is something that we are quite proud of. Uh, you know, she started straight out of university at Nexo back in the days where I was still doing recruiting <laughs> myself. So she is a personal hire of mine and somebody that I am very proud to have in our ranks. And she started as a very gifted copywriter and working all the way up to now this um, position of um, of the PR specialist and coordinator at Nexo, wearing different hats uh, at the same time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is super exciting. And it's super exciting because the AAA, the Ask Anthony Anything, is going to be transformed back into an AMA, which will be the Ask Maggie Anything sessions, and this is not a, a, a transform or reverse uh, to a mean, but it's a stellar upgrade because she will be um, taking on this uh, sessions that we will do even more frequently because she will take this job even more serious than I have in the past. And I have been known to be busy sometimes with other things. So regularity will once again be uh, absolutely monthly and punctual. And I am super happy to be, you know, co-hosting this session together with her today. And from henceforth, it will be her who will be answering your questions, hosting our guests. So, you know, super excited about that. For those of you who are ready to write me off and send me off to retirement, this is not quite the case. Although I must confess, after the carnage that crypto has seen in 2022 and some of the interesting moments of 2023, I have been catching myself daydreaming about a tiny remote house somewhere surrounded by vineyards and no internet connection. But unfortunately, in this day and age, this is not so quite easily when you have to, you know, continue support this incredible enterprise that Nexo is. So I will be around. Hopefully, uh, you, the Nexo fans, will not rally in a Sam Altman type of manner and want to reinstate me back as the host of the AMA because I am absolutely sure that Maggie will do an even finer job than I have. So with that very short five minute monologue of which, uh, you know, it probably will be the last, at least in that format, I suggest we kick off things right off with the questions directly. All right. So the first question conveniently is for Elitsa, and I am going to read it comes from Jürgen. We are by now accustomed him to get the most votes on the questions, but there it is. Can we expect all you can earn for other crypto too? Volume has increased. Elitza, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, hi, once again. And thanks for the question, Jürgen. Um, 
all you can learn was the, our response to a specific market and macro conditions uh, that led to an increased demand for stablecoin loans um, in the past few months. And that continues to be the case uh, today. So our rates on stable coins uh, will uh, stay stable for the foreseeable future. Um, and for Bitcoin and Ethereum, which I guess is your <laughs> question uh, referred to, uh, we didn't increase our rates in um, in May um, because we already had one of the leading uh, leading rates in the in the industry, and um, uh, if not the best, which uh, assures a steady uh, influx of deposits over time and stable uh, growth rate for us uh, and our um, assets under management, which we comfortably utilize and. Um, sustainably manage um, and that um, I think is the reason we uh, won't um, make a rate hikes aggressive rate hikes in the near future uh, but of course a slight increases are are always on the radar and uh, we do a lot of promotion nowadays uh, so please stay informed of uh, any short-term opportunities for an increased um, yields and um, yeah I think that covers uh, the question for all you can learn and how it evolves and it will continue uh, for now for the stablecoin rates that are up to 16% uh, as you uh, most of you probably already know. Thanks. Yep, well, thank <laughs> you very much. Maggie, do you want to yeah, I can read the next question since it's for Anthony. So, Anthony, will we be able to earn in kind on selected assets and in Nexo tokens on other assets in the future? By Ziggy. Right. Well, thank you, Ziggy, for that. Um, you know, the earn interest product is um, it's a it's a function of various different um criteria, um, as Elitza has pointed out. It ultimately goes back also in uh to the trading team and their ability to you know utilize strategies by which to generate the yield which we then uh, share on with you so it is a function of the market i don't necessarily have insights into every strategy that they deploy uh but it's my understanding that we always try to you know uh allow the earn interest product to be as flexible as possible and tailored to the desires of you, the clients, uh, supporters and fans out there. So if more people raise their hands and say, you know, we want earn in kind on the selected different assets and then the option to turn it uh, into Nexo tokens, I'm sure the team is looking into that and how to make it possible. Uh, where it is viable, you know, whatever we do in the earned interest product is uh, is not, you know, um, per se. So, you know, um, following a particular goal for its own sake, but rather something that makes uh, sense economically and that we can uh, sustainably, uh, um, uh, you know, ensure that we provide going forward so we'll definitely will be elevating that to the team uh, and they'll make a decision for which kinds of assets that make sense and where it uh, might not for whatever reason i think that um, you know another common desire amongst you folks is to have more and more and more assets on the platform and this is something that you know we have been trying to accommodate um it had been sometimes challenging from an infrastructure uh, perspective, you know, various different blockchains, making sure that now that we have more than 6 million uh, clients and growing that, uh, you know, the, the infrastructure underpinning the enterprise uh, is um, robust enough to handle new influx of volume. You know, this is one of the great things of bear markets, uh, the one that I hope is now behind us, that you can use that quieter times to build out the infrastructure. So I think we are perfectly positioned uh, uh, in, in that sense to be adding more assets and more flexibility around the particular assets. So we'll definitely be looking into expanding the offering uh, in that perspective. All right. And the next one is for Maggie. 
How does the low interest borrowing feature work on Nexo? You used to have 0% borrowing range, rates. Do you foresee any changes to this, that this new low cost borrowing is out? Asks us Sean. Um, I think this question was quite popular because there's some confusion going around between our original 0% um, borrowing rates for the platinum tier and the 2.9% APR for gold tier. And the new feature we launched, which is the low interest borrowing uh, toggle feature. So what this new feature actually does is it enables you guys to um, use our zero and low cost borrowing rates more effectively. What that means is it basically automates um, transfers of your assets from your savings wallet to your credit line wallet if your LTV is about to go over 20%. And uh, people who use our zero cost and low cost borrowing uh, rates know that in order to get them, you have to be either in the platinum tier or our gold loyalty tier, and you need to maintain an LTV that's under 20%. So basically this little toggle uh, tells your Nexo account, okay, so if the LTV is going to go above 20%, just take assets from my savings wallet to make sure it stays under. And it's really handy to make sure you're getting our lowest possible rates when you're borrowing. And it's really good if you have, have say, like a larger loan or something, it can be a real lifesaver. So I think that's where this like confusion is coming. Uh, and to enable the feature, just kind of, if you don't know where it is, or if you're only just hearing about it, you can find it in our credit hub, which is on uh, your dashboard of your Nexo app. And and you tap that, it'll be right there for you to switch on or off. But you can also find it in the top left. There's a little profile icon um, and then in the settings menu there and the toggle is right there. And speaking of confusion, I just want to address another kind of, I guess, pain point, uh, the confusion between this feature and our older automatic collateral transfer, because uh, functionally, these two things, they do the same. They move assets from your savings wallet to your credit line wallet, wallet automatically, but with a different goal. So automatic collateral transfer, it also still exists. It's still available. You can switch it on and off if you have a loan anytime you want, but it will only move assets if you're about to exceed the permitted LTV, which means that if you're about to have like your assets automatically uh, sold, it's not gonna let that happen. It's gonna move assets from your savings wallet as long as you have them to keep your crypto safe. Whereas the new low interest borrowing feature will do that at 20% LTV, which is really low. It's very far away from a margin call, but the point is to get you the lowest possible rate. So you have kind of two safety nets now. Um, and that's it from me. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Isn't she great, folks? Maggie, would you consider uh, doing the Bloomberg and CNBC interviews and I can go into early retirement? How does that sound? Uh, I mean, I'll practice a little bit on the Amazon and then <laughs> we'll see. All right. We'll take you one step at a time. All right. Well, thank you for that answer. Uh, Elitza, the next one is for you. It comes from Chris and Chris asks us, will I ever be able to get my salary paid directly into my Nexo account? or set up a direct debit from it? Hi, Chris. Thanks for the question. Uh, this is what I also <laughs> wait for to receive my salary in Nexo. Of course, we are working on that and it's part of uh, strongly correlated with a more bigger strategic initiative at Nexo to enable um, and expand our banking capabilities over time uh, where third-party payments uh, also are considered uh, to be important for us um, for our global expansion. Um, and to the direct deposit question, we are uh, in the, in talks with European provider for uh, for such a product. And for those of you that don't know uh, what direct deposit means, uh, uh, it's the so-called open banking where uh, with a native integration, you can transfer back and forth um, money uh, from and to, to your bank account. Uh, within a seamless integration uh, on our platform. And um, I can assure you that this is something um, we will be um, uh, launching in 2024. Um, and to that point, because direct deposits uh, is something um, on the priority list of a team, um, bigger team uh, around the on-ramping uh, solutions globally. We also are in talks uh, with um, global payment providers to enable um, solutions for bank transfers of local bank accounts and native payment integrations for uh, various jurisdictions so our clients can have uh, easier easier access to the Nexo 
to their Nexo accounts and uh, easier on ramps. And this will, of course, increase uh, the platform activity and is part of our uh, global expansion effort. So stay tuned on some announcements in 2024 on that, um, on those topics. Yeah, and the other thing that's worth mentioning, perhaps, is that, uh, you know, like we learn, we run a global enterprise, which means like we are present in various different jurisdictions and continents. So, you know, a feature like that, it might very well be that it first gets available somewhere, but not elsewhere. So it's going to be a little bit different in terms of uh, the experience for customers, because there are local and particularized um requirements that we have to meet in order to enable that so some of you guys will get it quicker the other ones will have to be a little bit more patient but rest assured we are working hard on getting that across yep exactly all right uh maggie next one is for you when are we going to be able to spend our crypto with debit mode asks us eric um loads of i guess card questions coming in this Emma. So short answer is soon, 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 soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, just to put in a little sweetener for you guys, um, I think the spending your crypto function for the debit mode of our card is going to come as a bit of a gift or a present um, sooner than you think. So I don't know, take that as a teaser, uh, take that as you will. But uh, I think it's worth noting here why we're actually um, moving a little bit slower and didn't roll out this feature earlier when we actually did release debit mode. And um, just so you can understand the kinks that we're working for, through, um, but we're on it, we're almost done. So it's it's refunds, seeing as like, yeah, you know, you go, you spend your crypto with your card, it's all good. The spending part is very easy for us, trust me. But um, if a refund is necessary, you know, sometimes they happen, but when and if one is necessary, uh, we can't just go back and then buy that Bitcoin again, right? Because it's a volatile market, things change. It's not exactly like buying fiat money back. So we essentially need a new fiat denominated process for this kind of transaction, should it be necessary. And um, the thing is, at Nexo, um, like since I've worked there and it's been more than four years now, we're always focused on bringing like a polished, finalized product. We want you guys to take this card, to take this feature and use it seamlessly, not for there to be problems, especially not like bigger ones with payments and things like that. We never want anything to go wrong, which is why we're taking it slow, but we're almost at the finish line. So yeah, that's it for me. Yep. All oh, right. Next question. Yeah, the next question is for Elitza. Uh, when DeFi card, please consider at Silk when it is ready, asks us Valkin. Uh, okay. I'm not sure what Silk stands for. Hopefully not still Silk Road, but uh, for the OGs that remember what Silk Road is. <laughs> but do take the floor, Ellie. Uh, yeah, short question and long answer. <laughs> uh, um, probably you already noticed we are in uh, somewhat um, uh, some type of a consolidation stage of our product where the things we built in the past two years are now um, considered to be merged into our all-in-one uh, wealth management solution that is the Nexo app uh, and this marked uh, the futures trading release marked this our um desire um, and steps into this direction. And uh, this includes uh, the Web3 and the non-custodial solutions we were developing uh, in the past two years and launched uh, behind the brand next to Wallet. Um, so advanced trading is something that uh, we are on the path to merge uh, back to, to the coherent, the one in all coherent platform. And this uh, goes to the self-custody element as well, where we envision a uh, type of product, um, dual mode, the same way we have credit and debit, but we can have custody and self-custody. And um, uh, we are still in the assessment uh, period. Uh, why is that the case and why it takes so long? Is so uh, our aim is to match what we have uh, currently with uh, our custody next to card solution where you have uh, earn while spending simultaneously. And that's something uh, we want to have uh, in a DeFi ecosystem. Um, and that's not uh, 
that's a particular blocker in DeFi because you cannot easily um, access access your funds if you stake them. You cannot access them immediately. Um, so our aim in few words is to have the same strong market fit we have with our current product and um, have the self-custody element in it. And we are um, in internal discussions on how to achieve this uh, in order to, to have the market fit. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to launch it at all. Uh, and I would love to uh, hear your thoughts on that. So please uh, reach out and let me know how you are going to use that product and what you ex expect from it, how you envision it, and that will help us shape uh, the product internally and potentially inform our research and we'll see where this will lead us. I hope that we will offer uh, the best of both worlds in one single platform very soon. I actually have something tiny to add to that one before we move on to the next question. And um, it's a lot about the offering that we already have. Like uh, you guys know that we support over 60 assets and some of them are DeFi tokens and um, it is possible to get, you know, exposure through DeFi through our current offering and with and the card that comes with it. So if you're asking for a card that will allow you to also um, deal with your DeFi tokens, we do have like, it's not a DeFi card, but it is a solution that you can use um, on the way. And the more seamless like uh, things become, the easier that will be to get, you know, DeFi exposure and use the card. So that's that's my little addition um there so i see the next question is for anthony so i'm going to go ahead and read it for him uh anthony lending cards futures b2b what is the next big milestone for nexo bye yo yo all right um we got a couple um so you know i will start off with geography and full disclosure i'm terrible at geography uh, i only know the places i've visited but don't quote me on that um, so, you know, with the exit from the U.S. and somehow the world appears to, you know, get smaller, but actually that's that's a deception. The world is as big as ever and crypto is lurking from everywhere. Um, and I think the next big milestones have to do with geographic diversification and expanding in uh, new territories uh, like we are present in pretty much all territories that are not blacklisted or we have decided to voluntarily exit such as the US and Canada uh, but you know I think we can do a lot more in specific regions in the world you know something like Latin America where we have uh, you know in Argentina a very very interesting new president uh, just being elected, somebody who is an advocate for crypto, who gets it, who is of our, when I say our, I mean crypto folks type of mentality when it comes to finances and money. So I think we could do there a lot more. Uh, we have been exploring Brazil as a potential market uh, to do more. And I'm super excited because um you know, I have Brazilian friends and they have been advising on what could potentially be interesting uh, there for the market. So, you know, super exciting stuff. If you're in this part of the world, Southeast Asia, always a market that one could do more. So the next milestones that are important uh, to Nexo are connected to it, uh, you know, new territories, new markets, and bringing the offering that we have successfully brought, uh, you know, a lot of places, but now even more, uh, I was almost going to say aggressively, but probably not the uh, right world, but like, you know, more adoption out of the fact that uh, the world is changing, microeconomics is changing, and, um, you know, people's perception of crypto now having survived yet another challenge to its ex existence uh, successfully. I think uh, even more people will get excited about crypto. So that opens up the doors on a variety of different fronts. Then 
if this is one pillar of milestones, uh, you know, we have at least two more that um, come to my mind right here on the spot. The second one would be, you know, refining and further improving our existence, existing offering. You know, when you use the product, you always see little things that can be um, improved upon, uh, you know, just like from an experience point of view. So we'll not get idle there and continue to work on that. And then the third pillar, if you will, would be with something that, uh, you know, new products. Um, and I'm talking about crypto native products. For instance, we have something super exciting coming up. I don't want to quite uh, spoil the announcement here by saying what it is or who it is with but it has to do with tax reporting, which increasingly is more um, essential in different parts of the world. Now that most governments have taken notice of crypto, you know, uh, the tax angle gets uh, more important and they will track down those who uh, have accumulated uh, profits trading crypto. Hopefully this will be everyone with the continued rise of Bitcoin. So, you know, a handy little product to get uh, across the finish line so that it can help you, um, you know, settle any tax matters that uh, might be applying to you. So this is something like just a small example of something that we're working on. But you know, also like entire new fronts. I am super excited about gaming. I'm super excited about, um, you know, potentially tapping into um, different assets, asset classes for trading. So, you know, stocks, commodities, trying to figure out a way of how we bring them in a compliant and safe manner. On the Nexo platform, it is things like that. I want us to be present in more places throughout the world. And I want us to have a more holistic 360 degrees that goes out just from the the mirror. Well, mirror sounds almost condescending, but like outside of just the crypto stuff that uh, we are on our way to have perfected. And I want us to expand beyond that. I hope that answers the question. As Elitza said, short and a uh, short question, log answer, but that is my trademark. So the next one is for Maggie. This is a long answer, which will probably beg an even longer uh, long question that will beg an even longer an answer, but let's see. A part of Nexus Appeal is the clean and easy to you understand UI. How do you make sure that the Nexo UI, web and app, and mobile won't become overwhelming as the amount of feature keeps growing over time? Thanks. Um, okay, well, I'm going to start by saying that I am really happy that you asked this question, and it's a huge compliment actually to our UX and design team that somebody actually notices it and, and is validating all of their work. They do work really hard. Um, I have two kind of avenues to answer it and Anthony's absolutely right. It's gonna be a long answer, so <laughs> gear up. Um, the first one is how we achieve this like nice intuitive interface and in, in, in our web and app. And then the second one is what products we've actually uh, kind of launched recently that do that. So I'm gonna start with how, obviously. Um, at a more top level, uh, looking at things from above, it's really that uh, we view UX as it's a product mindset, right? Um, the moment we conceive a product, someone has an idea or we, you know, we see something that we want to create, the UX team is already in that room speaking their mind and making sure, thinking about how this new thing is going to fit into the existing framework. Because the goal isn't just to create a really good product, it's to make sure that people can actually go in and use it without our help, without us consistently having to meddle. So um, it's just the mindset and like uh, figuring out all the visual hierarchies. Um, 
because ultimately we also, uh, people don't realize that our app and our web platform, they are basically a living organism because they're constantly evolving. And uh, we do so many little updates that you guys don't necessarily even see. It's things like, you know, fixing a button here or a tool tip popping up. And um, actually I see the, the copywriters running around with the UX team being like, oh, I'm going to write this little thing in this tool tip because people don't get it. And you don't necessarily notice that they're not even worth announcing. They're like little drops. But um, I, I keep telling people this is like, isn't an ocean just a multitude of drops? Like, isn't that the saying? So uh, that's kind of our approach. And then kind of to top that off, uh, recently we uh, launched our trigger swap feature and we did an exchange redesign. So we interviewed one of our UX designers and you can actually check out the interviews on our blog in one of the What's New articles. And he was talking about how we integrate feedback. So actually when they create something for UX, a lot of people at Nexo test it. I have tested one of the versions of the app. Uh, so, you know, our theory is like, okay, so if we're trying to use the app and we can't find our way around, then how are the clients going to do it? And then we also test with clients sometimes. So it's a lot of feedback from clients and from employees that we put together. And the second thing um, our designer said was really interesting. He mentioned um, decluttering and simplification. So he told me, uh, so we just go back uh, periodically and we look at what we've got and all these little features that we've put in. And we ask ourselves, is every single thing that's on that screen right now, 100% must be there or we can't go with it, go without it. Uh, so if it isn't 100% meant to be there, uh, they change it, they fix it, they remove it, and they declutter the app. So that's how um, we got to this like nice clean UI. And I'm really glad that like people are noticing it and um, asking us how, because that's really cool. In terms of what, we actually did release quite a lot of features recently that help us give you an intuitive and easy to use user fate, um, user experience. Oh my gosh. Um, so the first one was actually the exchange redesign that we did um, and specifically three little features in it. I, I really want to highlight for people. The first one was being able to immediately uh, select your order type from the get go when you're making swaps. Uh, another one is being able to immediately uh, with one tap select the currently the currency you want to receive rather than having to go back, change the whole pair. I remember that being kind of clunky in previous versions in the app, and I was so happy they did that. Um, and now you can also enter how much of a currency you want to receive uh, rather than having to kind of do the math in your head and uh, figure out how much you need to sell and get what you need in terms of uh, quantity. So that was our exchange redesign. It came out with the trigger swap feature about a month ago, I think, something like that. Um, and then two, two last things that I just want to touch upon. One of them was uh, our integration of unstoppable domains. So that's ENS. Um, for anyone who's not familiar, those are the .eth addresses. And basically what, what that means is sometimes when you want to withdraw assets from Nexo, you can use your ENS address rather than using your OX a thousand symbols that you can't remember. Uh, I think this is really user friendly and this is like where we're moving into using I mean, I, I just compare it to like your email for blockchain. Uh, it's not exactly the same thing technologically, but you get what I mean. Um, and the last little integration uh, I really want to highlight is being able to uh, visualize the currencies and the balances in your wallets um, in euros and Great British Pounds. Um, because previously you could only do that in dollars. Like if you had some Bitcoin and you would get like the dollar amount of how much bitcoin you've got which is fine unless you know you're not from the us and you don't you're, like your brain just doesn't speak dollars because um that happens so now you can also use euros and pounds um so yeah that's a that's a really good kind of flexibility element if you're in need and that's kind of it for me and thanks for this really great question i think it was a huge compliment for us so i, I thought i had something to add oh god <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to say that, you know, one of the uh, of the ways of, uh, you know, making sure we keep it nice and clean going forward, that we have even more offerings, etc., will be to, you know, to, to involve you, you, the client, in a way that you can select what you want to see in your interface and whatnot. Um, and then, you know, a curious thing that I recently found out is that, um, you know, in certain countries, particularly in Southeast Asia, actually a nice clean design is the exact opposite that people want. It turns out that in, in certain countries over there, you got to have everything in front of you and has to be flashing in the different colors. So this is like, 
you know, evidence, visual evidence that your product is truly advanced. So, you know, I, 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 we live in a very globalized world and, you know, everything's super connected in terms of societies, but I love that we still have these cultural changes, uh, differences, and we will try and adopt our product accordingly to the different markets. So next time, well, probably not next time, but in the near future, if you log in with a, uh, I don't know, South Korean IP and you see your interface entirely different, uh, in an entirely different way, don't be shocked. It is because of the uh, the strange cultural difference that um, I'm happy we still have. And with that, we can move on to the next question. It comes for Elitsum. Can we get more cryptocurrencies added to Nexo with added networks? Um, yeah, I'm going to use the chance to shout out to the team that made all those integrations in the past few months possible. Uh, we added some of the most, the highly anticipated uh, network support for Optimism. Uh, Solana, Algorand, Phantom, and few others uh, in just a few months, uh, which uh, proves our strong commitment to support uh, strong projects on uh, that are considered the backbone of uh, blockchain and have uh, huge communities and roadmaps um, ahead of them. And um, this is one part of the equation. The second is uh, our aim with the futures trading um, launch <laughs> uh, that recently happened on the next up is to time the market in terms of support for uh, uh, various perpetual contracts uh, when they are listed on leading, leading exchanges and in this way um, allow for price exposure and uh, more trading opportunities for for our clients uh, since the thing is that most people uh, um, most people don't want to hold um, any asset for the long term some of the assets are for the long term some of the assets are for volatility price exposure timing the market and uh, this is where futures training comes very handy if you uh, understand it and know how to use it and uh, are well informed of the market dynamics so on those two fronts we will, we are well prepared to offer um on one hand um support uh, in our product stack uh, for strong projects and uh, networks where we see uh, demand for earn, borrowing against those tokens and um, transferring on the state network. And on the other hand, um, exposure to price volatility with futures trading and uh, timing the market uh, when some tokens are only listed on such markets. Um, and yeah. So we, we will continue to to support everything you, you, you come uh, with to us and uh, make sure that our product fits your trading and long-term needs. That's my short answer <laughs> because I, think I don't talk as much as needed, but yeah, I hope it answers your question. We certainly, you know, compensate in yeah. terms of length of answers. So I think we're just fine. Thank you. <laughs> hey, so I think this next one's for Anthony. So Anthony, what are your plans for the future of the Nexo in-app exchange? You've added a few new features. What's next from Shaheem? Well, thank you, Shaheem. Um, I think Elitsa, to some extent, touch upon some of the new functionalities. Um, I think immediately on the roadmap, we have uh, futures trading, you know, something that we uh, introduced a few, is it now weeks? Uh, I've yeah. lost track of time, but yeah, I think weeks ago. And this um, th th this is a great product. Like there are other other. Um, you know, companies that offer something similar. But I think if you spend time uh, checking out Nexus offering, you see how it's better in terms of experience, um, you know, uh, UI, UX, um, and also uh, on the backside of it, how the orders get executed to uh, ensure, you know, best pricing that um, you are accustomed uh, to receiving from Nexo, um, you know, Futures is such a great tool. Um, just, you know, always make sure that you thread carefully because like in certain jurisdictions, leverage that is allowed is up to 50x and that 
can quickly get dangerous if you don't uh, manage your risk properly. So always, please, please, please manage your risk properly. But definitely, this is something that we are bringing on to uh, the next. So in-app exchange, you know, then the trigger swaps, which are this um, customized exchange orders that get hit um, when certain price criteria are met. So this is pretty cool that you can, you know, predetermine levels that are interested, interesting to you and then have the, 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 the software execute those for you, for you, you know, dollar cost averaging, something that, you know, time and again has proven to be the best strategy possible for, uh, you know, I would argue generational um, uh, wealth growth. So this is something that's coming into the next so in-app exchange as well. And, you know, the buy uh, with crypto uh, card experience as well. And, uh, you know, the team has asked me to tease out something without really mentioning it. So I don't know how to do it, but it has to do with everyone's dream of buying low and selling high. And it's a very interesting product that on the surface might look very complicated, but you know, the silver tongues of copywriters and presenters that we have at Nexo will do a stellar job explaining exactly what that product is because actually it's a phenomenal one and it works for a great variety of different clients, anything from retail customers that are looking to enhance their their yield and uh, their asset growth to miners. And it's super, super uh, exciting type of product that we are bringing uh, in the next few days and weeks. We're going to roll it out. So, you know, it's that good of a product that I kept it for the end of uh, this session today. And I hope with that I have successfully teased it without you guessing directly what it is. Not the easiest of jobs, but, um, you know, you'll be the judge of whether I've done a uh, a fair job of uh, doing that. And was that the last question? I think it I, was. Yeah, that was the last question. Well, thank you so much, Elitza and Maggie, for doing this with me today. Um, you know, not teary eyes. The next time you <laughs> see me on the um, AMA session here with Maggie will be as a guest. So I am super excited about doing that. And, you know, Elitza is by now a regular sharing insights of the products uh, and services that have just been launched, are there for a while, and the ones that are yet to come. So super exciting stuff. I am happily handing over the proverbial baton to Maggie, and the next session will be with her in about a month's time. So stay tuned for a pre-Christmas edition. Thank you all. (laughs) See you around. Thanks, everyone. See you next month. Bye-bye.